And I always say, I couldn't care less about your level of success. Show me your level of service. What I love most about Peru is its truth serum. The blue checks, the filters, those, those all fall away when you get down there. Because really the only thing that Peru is looking for is heartbeat. Welcome to the Deja Vu podcast, where we believe that living a life of magic can be the default. Join us each week as we playfully and authentically dive into the mysteries of life and explore what it truly means to be human. From spirituality, wellness, and all things to boo, we don't hold anything back. So without further ado, let's let the magic unfold. Today's episode is sponsored by Becoming with a Q. So Becoming is a space for community to come together and to realign what it truly means to be you in the full entirety of yourself before you were told who you were meant to be. This is connecting with the essence of who you've always known yourself to be, but being held in a community of individuals that are pioneers, creating an ecosystem to reflect back to you all of the blind spots to create a structure that allows you to genuinely build an authentic life from the foundation up. Becoming host retreats all around the world, also an online community, trainings, and so much more. I truly believe in becoming with my whole heart and soul because I have had the blessing to be able to walk very intimately with the founders of Becoming, Benjamin and Azra, who have single-handedly changed the entire course of my life, aligning me with the prosperity that I have always known is possible, but have never been reflected it through my immediate environment until meeting them. It is truly an honor and I am so excited that the Deja Blue podcast is partnering with Becoming because it is a place that all of the information that can be absorbed from the Deja Blue podcast can actually actually be put into real tangible action steps and allow you to build a life from the inside out that actually resonates with your own heart frequency of truth. The next offering for Becoming is a four week online program called Becoming Prosperous. Aligning ourselves from the inside out with a truly prosperous life and actually learning to understand what prosperity really even means. It goes so far beyond just our finances. Truly recognizing that prosperity lives within our immediate friends, how we serve our community, our service to the world, our relationship with our finances, our relationship with our body, our relationship with the earth, and recognizing that how we do anything is how we do everything. And so this four week course is going to be breaking it down right to the bare basics and allowing ourselves to rebuild a life of true prosperity. So if you want more information about it, go check out the link in the show notes. And without further ado, welcome to today's episode. Hello, you beautiful bluebirds, and welcome back to another episode of the Deja Blue podcast. I have taken a minute to actually integrate what the heck just happened in my life. <laughs> Everything completely transformed on a mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, multidimensionally, on every frequency possible after these past three weeks that I spent in Peru with this majestic human that I'm sitting here with. Um, not only have I had the gift to be able to weave with this human for the past seven years, a whole seven year cycle, uh, but he has been an ally and a friend and somebody that has deeply cared from his heart while simultaneously also not only in my own personal experience, but is also a heart led leader in the world that is bringing compassion while also highlighting narratives that are really, really important right now. And so he has impacted my life in infinite ways. And we've already had him on the podcast once where we shared lots of juicy things about his story. But today we're going to be focusing on what we just both embarked on over the past, well, a few weeks, about a month ago, but we were there for three weeks. So it is truly an honor to have motivational speaker, upcoming author, leader, and founder of the Warrior Retreats, while also being a Nike master trainer and also in integrated in the world of core power yoga. And there are so many things that I like scroll off of what this man does. Uh, however, the most important thing beyond all of the labels is his heart, his presence, and how humbly he weaves through this world. So it is truly an honor to welcome to the Deja Blue podcast, Brandon Collinsworth. Woo! <laughs> Such an honor to be here and officially be in the studio. I know our last podcast was via Zoom, and it just doesn't have the same. Impact. Yeah, yeah, we we are officially here, and <gasps> to come here after what transpired in Peru is such an honor. And just to mirror back to you everything 
that you stand for. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being such a steward. Thank you for being a leader that walks the walk. And every time we get to come into the same space and play and share codes and inspire and empower, it's always an honor. So thank you for having me here, Blue. Mm, and my counterpart, Lily, is also <laughs> licking you like because I, <laughs> we're basically <clears throat> the same person, but in, in two different bodies. So if I just want to <laughs> extend my love, it's just, I'm just like, Lily. Give them a lick on the foot. <laughs> respect, respect. <laughs> so I want to break down uh, what we just experienced together. Mm. I haven't shared it on the podcast yet because I also felt like just sitting alone and talking into a black camera and be like, hey, and creating this personal experience to honor actually what happened didn't feel like it was going to do it justice. Mm. So I wanted to wait until you got to LA. I mean, you literally just got off an airplane. You went straight to Air One, picked up some juices and then came over here. So we were like getting you fresh so after fresh. some travel. <laughs> so, so fresh, fresh and so clean, clean. Yeah, fresh. <laughs> In all the ways. In all the ways. <laughs> um, and... I want, because we've already talked about your personal story. Mm -hmm. And so if anybody wants to tune in to uh, hearing Brandon's story and just where you've come from and, and what you've had to, the, the, the terrain that you've had to navigate uh, to be who you are mm -hmm. today, then we can go check out that podcast. It's in season two. It's the mm -hmm. end of season two. Um, however, I would really love to just dive into warrior retreats. Mm -hmm. And this is just a strong piece that I'm receiving is that this year is the year of the warrior and mm. I am being personally initiated into the warrior in many aspects of my life, whether it is um, through standing in my truth, mm -hmm. uh, having a public platform, um, being uh, the, the place of the realm of being projected onto by a lot of people that also mm -hmm. are not super stoked on the message, while also the majority of those that are really um, resonant. And so this is the, the year of the warrior, not only also in that platform, but also physically, and then from a place of service and being about, able to be a voice for the voiceless. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many different aspects that are being initiated into. So would you be open to sharing a little bit about Warrior retreats. What is warrior retreats? How did warrior retreats come about? And just share um, a bit of context before we go into our own personal experience. What happened? Yeah, absolutely. And as you just said, to walk the path of truth, to walk our dharma, requires us to be a warrior for what it is we stand for. And a lot of times when people hear warriors, they think of like somebody who's fighting or you know, some crazy martial artist, but really anybody who's standing in their truth and standing for their why is a warrior. And it really comes down to, you know, all the battles that we come up against, some small, some big, but every day continuing to forge forward. And so the warrior means so much to me more than a physical practice. It's a, it's a mental practice. It's a spiritual practice. It's an emotional practice. And each and every person who steps forward and gives their best each and every day truly can you know, claim that warrior archetype and use it as a mechanism to really bring their highest expression to life. Mm -hmm. So warrior is, as, as I've mentioned, I, I speak to her as her own thing. And she's this expression that has blossomed as a result of me staying true to my dharma. A lot of people who know my story know that I grew up on the streets. I grew up in the projects. I grew up in gang infested neighborhoods. I grew up fighting and facing addiction and overcoming that, truly walking my own warrior's path. But a lot of people, when they hear warrior, they don't think also about the heart and that it's truly the heart that makes a warrior powerful. And as I walked my path and I started going deeper into the work, Inevitably, I was reconnected with my father. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so at 27 years old, I'm in my senior year at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And my professor, who was African-American social history professor, was doing a documentary at a local high school in Vegas called, Las Ve uh, called Valley High School. And I remembered my mother told me that she met my father at Valley High School. And at that time, I got like a message from like some estranged sister, but I didn't really know like the depths of the connections of my father and what he did or anything like that. But my professor was talking about this documentary he was doing at Valley High School. And I said, I think my mom and dad met at Valley High School. And he looks at me and he goes, Brandon, is your dad named Lane Rowling? And that was actually my father's name. And I'm like, yeah, that's my father's name. He's like, you look just like him. 
And that's my big brother's best friend. So that night he calls up his big brother. That night my father calls me for the first time. I'm 27 years old. Come to find out my father is living in the Amazon jungle as an infectious disease doctor and trauma surgeon working with the indigenous people. So in 2012, I'm going deep into the work. I'm working on forgiveness. I'm working on my heart. I could come up with all these narratives of why I don't want to like ever meet my father again. You weren't there for me. You should have shown up for me more. I had to grow up in the hood. I had to grow up from the streets. But because of the work, I said, you know what? This is an opportunity to reconnect with the lineage that was taken from me. And so I'm going to go down to Peru and build this relationship with my father. So I get down to Peru and my father's kind of a legend down there. They call him Dr. Chocolate or Dr. Fanta because he's a black dude, African-American dude who decided to go to the jungles of Peru, fell in love with the Peruvian woman and made Peru his world. And they call him Dr. Chocolate or Dr. Fanta because the tribes could bring him a bottle of orange Fanta soda or a piece of chocolate. And if they didn't have money, he would do surgeries for them for free. So he brought me down there and he brought me into the world of humanitarian work. And this is when he brought me into the hospitals and he brought me into the people of Peru. And he brought me into a world where not only were they so much less fortunate than even the projects that I grew up in, but what blew my mind was that they were exponentially more grateful than the most influential people I knew. And so Peru started to become my medicine. It started to give me perspective. It started to help me string together my story to really understand that we're given everything we need and even the struggles inevitably become the tools that we wield as we connect deeper with our heart. And so from 2012 to 2016, I spent three to four months a year with my father in the jungles of Peru. 2016 comes around at that time. I'm, you know, one of the top trainers in the game, signed to Nike, chain of gyms in Vegas, but still feeling empty. And I started to go deeper into my yoga practice, deeper into meditation, deeper into my dharma. Mm -hmm. And the world of plant medicine opened up. And all of a sudden, all my brothers and sisters in the game are working with plant medicine. They're in circles in LA. They're in circles in Vegas. There's this, this deep desire to reconnect with the indigenous and I was like why am I going to work with it here when my father's already carved out this path in the jungles I'm going to go ahead and open up the doors and start working with the medicine in Peru so I decided to go down to Peru randomly felt called to go to the sacred valley ended up finding this place called La Pacha they also have a website. It's called the Sacred Valley Tribe.com, the biggest assortment of medicine music in the world, stewarded by my mentor teacher, Diego Palma, who passed away a couple years ago. But he really is like the Steve Jobs of the medicine world down there. <laughs> like he innovated and brought mantras and instruments into the medicine space. And after I sat in ceremony for my first time in Peru, I was so blown away at the energy of those lands that I got on the phone and I said, I'm gonna bring some people here. I invited two people. And the next thing you know, I had 20 people coming to what was just a friend gathering. And I thought it was just gonna be us like hanging out and I ended up hosting everybody for a week. I was like, this is just supposed to be friends and I'm, I'm basically creating a <laughs> retreat for y'all. And so Warrior Retreats was born. Mm. Warrior Retreats was born. And I basically sat down and I asked myself, what are the things that matter most to me? Community, culture, cuisine, deep healing, deep conversation, deep connection, and service. And in that ceremony that night before I asked my friends to come, the Inca spirits came to me in the medicine ceremony. And they said, Brandon, you have permission to bring people here as long as you always leave Peru better than you found it. And this is why I go so hard for Peru, because so many people go to these spaces, Peru, Bali, Guatemala, Mexico, and they just take, there's not a sustainable relationship. And so that was the motivation behind Peru. It wasn't about making money. It wasn't about creating some retreat experience that 
brings notoriety. It was about creating a container that was off the grid where me and my friends could go initiate ourselves into a higher level of love, a higher level of service, and a higher level of truth. And so for the last seven years, that's really what the warrior journey has been about. By the time we got to Warrior Retreats 3, it started off as a seven-day retreat, Cusco, Aguas Caliente, and the Sacred Valley of Peru. Before my third Warrior Retreats, I had felt the call to go to the jungles, and I was in New Delhi at that time, and diving deeper into the yoga, and I was meditating at a hostel in New Delhi, and the jungles flashed before my eyes. And so before Warrior Retreats 3 went down, I went to Iquitos, Iquitos, Mm -hmm. a little jungle town in the middle of Peru where my father has taken me many times. And just a little side note, one of my father's missions was to expose and give more African-Americans the opportunity to step into the medical field. So from 2002 to 2020, he brought over 2,000 aspiring young black people to the jungles of Peru to inevitably step into a deeper level of humanitarian work, a deeper level of medicine, and a deeper level of themselves. And in that time, thousands of kids that never had a chance to go to medical school actually went into medical school. So my my father really left a massive imprint on the people of Peru, but also our communities back here in America. So before Warrior Retreats 3, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go down to the jungles by myself. I get to Iquitos, I take a little toot toot, the little motorcycles to the center of the city. I get dropped off. And as soon as I get dropped off, there's a guy standing there and he says, you look like you want to go into the jungles. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? You're absolutely right. I want to go into the jungles <laughs> and I trust that I'm going to be protected and taken care of. And so he takes me into this office. I meet Walter. Walter goes ahead and says, listen, I have a lodge four hours up the Amazon River. It's an incredible space. It's deeply immersed in the jungles. And next thing you know, I'm going on a four hour speedboat ride to where I brought everybody for our warrior retreats, where you experienced the space. And when I got there, there was a guy standing there named Wolf. Mm -hmm. And Wolf looks at me and he goes, hello, my friend, welcome to your home. And it was really telling it what it was gonna be, but I'm there in the middle of the jungles at this beautiful lodge with this beautiful man named Wolf. And I'm like, am I in the right place? Like, is this really smart what I'm doing? I'm down here by myself. There's nobody that can get a hold of me. And so he takes me out to the Amazon River and he looks into the water and he starts going, Chapa Mingi, Chapa Munga, Chapa Mingi, Chapa Munga. And the dolphins come out of the water, the pink (laughs) dolphins. And then that's when I was like, okay, this is about to be more magical than Avatar and Ferngoli put together. Like, this is going to be incredible. So that night, I decided to work with medicine in the jungles for my first time. And they brought a 86-year-old shaman from about a kilometer up the river down to the lodge to work with me. And about 8 p.m. at night, you just see this little rowboat come up. And I sat with him that night, and it was the first time I understood the difference between tripping and healing. Mm. Many ceremonies before, I tripped really hard. I went flying through the astral realms. I've, you know, experienced all kinds of stuff, but this was the first time I actually felt healing through his ikaros, through his dedication, through his intention, through the environment, through Pachimama holding me. I felt myself healing finally. And so it was there that I realized that I found the final piece to turn warrior retreats into a a full on rite of passage, something that we have lost in our modern day age. So many people are looking for these opportunities to be initiated, but we don't have it. So we end up initiating ourselves through alcohol, through drugs, through sex, through making money. But the truth is we are all just trying to have an encounter with the unknown and in that space learn more about ourselves, a contained encounter, which is the art of initiation. And so after that experience, I was like, okay, I'm going to commit to coming back here every year. And 
Wolf told me there was a prodigy shaman that was 700 kilometers up the Amazon River. And so you can't just access him. I guess he's like, he's a big deal in the jungles. And so I told him I'd come back next year. I would continue to commit to raising funds for their community and help them as they also can help us because, you know, we're in desperate need in the West to connect back with the heart. And so over the course of four years, I brought 100 plus people down to this village and slowly they became my family. And little by little, the doors began to open. It first started with the uncle of this prodigy shaman, Christian Antonor, who you met. And then the next year, it was the brother of the uncle. And then the year after that, it was finally Christian. And then when me and Christian became even closer, he began to bring his family into it. And what happened is, is that Warrior became a container where love is the central theme. And this is why people step into this container and they feel something different than stepping into most other containers is because it is rooted in family. And so it was Warrior Retreats 3 where Warrior Retreats turned from a seven to nine day retreat to a 14 day retreat from the Amazon all the way to the Andes. And it took seven years in total to really gain the respect and show these people that we're not there to exploit. We're committed to building and we're committed to being there in reverence. Mm -hmm. And so it's been one of the most beautiful journeys I've ever been on. I ended up finding out later, and there's a book called Ayahuasca My Blood by Peter Gorman. And in this book, there's a master healer named Papa Julio. Grandpa, like ancient, powerful lineage. And in the book, there's these young boys sitting at his feet. And these young boys are now grown men. And these grown men are the shamans that are now holding the spaces for my tribe, my people, my family to come down there and experience the healing that Peru has to offer. And so we are now at Warrior Retreat 7. It's taken seven years of deep commitment, deep dedication to Peru. We, our first year, we raised $500. And I was stoked. I was like, this is incredible. This past year, we raised $30,000 to give back to Peru. And we brought some of the most potent leaders in the world down there to experience heart, to experience the heartbeat. And I always say, I couldn't care less about your level of success. Show me your level of service. What I love most about Peru is its truth serum. The blue checks, the filters, those, those all fall away when you get down there. Because really, the only thing that Peru is looking for is heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the reason why Peru opened up the way it opened up for me, because I'm not anybody who claims to be a shaman. I am pretty grounded. I'm rooted in my hip hop and that's part of me for life is because I came correct and it was not what can I get, get, it was how can I serve first. And so that's been the journey that I've been on over the last seven years to, to, to create a sacred container where my friends can come together, heal, expand and learn about themselves in the most beautiful lands, in my opinion, in the world. Mm -hmm. And it is absolute honor to be able to steward it and to open these doors each and every year for more and more people to come down and truly feel what Peru has to offer. And the last little thing I'll say is that a lot of people ask if it's an ayahuasca retreat. And I say, no, it's a life ayahuasca retreat. <laughs> Because the truth is, the ultimate psychedelic, the ultimate medicine, the ultimate teaching is life. And medicine is just a part of it. Although, if you are going to work with the medicine, you should touch the medicine. And so one of the things that we really focused on is if people are going to drink the medicine, we give them one opportunity down there. They got to go make their own medicine. And it's a different experience when you go out into the jungles 
and you harvest the ayahuasca and you pick the chacruna and you go to Shiwawaku or Chantakiro or Bobenzana or Wakomayo Kaspi, the trees that work in conjunction and you say thank you and you pray on it. It's a different experience. It opens up the energy in a completely different way. And so I don't claim warrior to be mine. As I say on my Instagram, created through Brandon Collinsworth. It was a gift that I've been given to steward as a, a tool to help humanity connect deeper with their hearts. Pretty sure everyone that's listening to this or watching this is deeply in love with you now. <laughs> Essence of, yes, it's moving through you and the work that has had to be done for you to be brought to your knees over and over and over again to clean out your vessel so mm -hmm. that it's not about you, but it moves through you. That in itself is a decade of work Truth. to allow the hollow bone to become actually hollow. Mm -hmm. And so it's... It's really important also to, to recognize and acknowledge the amount of ego deaths you've had to go through to be able to birth warrior retreats, to even be a vibrational match to that, to pick you to move through. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that these inspirations or these ideas will sort of float in the ethers and will pick who is a vibra like the, the antenna that is vibrating at the frequency that's a match that can mm -hmm. actually pull it through. And the work that you've had to do to allow yourself to become hollow and open to then receive mm -hmm. this to come through. I'm curious, why is she a she? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the feeling that I get from, from what warrior is. Mm -hmm. she, she embodies like this god, goddess archetype, like Kali, like strong and fierce, mixed with Saraswati, like deeply creative mm -hmm. and deeply rooted in art. Mm -hmm. And so warrior, she's taken on this like feminine mm -hmm. essence, mm -hmm. this grounded feminine, like rooted in the ground, rooted in Pachimama so deeply that her, her branches can flow freely. Mm -hmm. And so uh -huh. every year we help her root down mm -hmm. so that she can flow. And then she directs it. We just hold on. And she's life giving. Yeah, yeah. She gives life. Because I can tell you from my personal experience, I was going through a, a really rough time for a few mm -hmm. months. And I was sort of brought to my knees many times within those few, in those few months. And I, I was up at my altar and I was praying and I, I called in some divine intervention, some angel, some support, because the same mindset that got me into this is not going to get me out of this mm -hmm. loop. And I open myself up to miracles. I open myself up to the miraculous and the complete unknown. And it was almost like 24 hours later. I don't even think it was that long. It was almost instantaneous. Um, we ended up in a conversation on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. You were sharing with me that you were just closing out um, the enrollment process and, mm -hmm. and the logistics of, of Warrior Retreat 7. And as soon as you wrote that on the WhatsApp, we hadn't even got on the phone. It was literally just the vibrational charge of the text alone. <laughs> Something in my being was like, ding, you are meant to be there. And I've, I've received that ding a handful of times in my life. One was taking on the mother tree. Two was picking up my dog. <laughs> Um, and three uh, has been like around certain people that have played an instrumental role in my life. This was that same feeling. Mm. It was crystal clear. The only thing that would stop me from listening to that was the stories in my head that was well, just making logical sense. I'm going to put my flight to Peru. I'm supposed to be in Mexico. Like the, this, the noise of the stories, but ultimately anything's possible if you place your mind to it. So I listened to that gut instinct and I asked you and it's like, Brandon, I know you said you've closed the applications, but I was wondering if there would be one tiny little space for a baby to, to fill that spot. And over seven years, I think it's also really um, synchronistic that it's taken seven years uh, to, 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 for Warrior to be what it is today. Yeah. We've also been um, in fr friendship for seven years and yeah. it was Warrior 7. Um, and you said, Blue, I got you like if you feel like you need to be there we can make it happen um we'll figure out the logistics and this is what will need to be done but like there's a spot for you and there was such um 
open-hearted, compassionate, loving welcome. And I felt so wanted there. And it was exactly the medicine that my heart needed. And it was everything I didn't know that I needed. And it was such a spontaneous decision. And honestly, my life has has not been the same since. And I do want to continue to put emphasis on the fact that it is not a medicine retreat because what warrior has been laced with is a dropping into a respect to the indigenous cultures and the medicines that run deep within that land, the cultivation of the medicine, the witnessing of the vine being pulled off the tree, the anaconda that is, <laughs> come on, there was a giant anaconda yeah. at the base of the ayahuasca tree with yeah. the vines watching and then my ethros pull the, the vine off of the trees mm -hmm. and then all cooking the medicine together. That was literally just like two days into the retreat. Mm -hmm. But the, the majority of the retreat, the focus, the heartbeat, the pulse of warrior mm -hmm. was the service. Mm -hmm. And I felt it from the second we got off that boat and got to the center in the jungle that P.S., you through warrior have helped build mm -hmm. this whole center it's exquisite mm -hmm. it's it's high class for the jungle you know i've been in the jungle and been in tiny little shacks you know and like hey, this is how it is <laughs> yeah. but you, because of warrior and the the mentality of giving back it's created this like impeccable center um in the amazon jungle and the second i put foot on that land i felt the reciprocity not just westerners that are coming to take from mm -hmm. these cultures to extract what we want for our healing and to just be like oh well we'll just pay you what your rate is but felt the reciprocity of these people aren't placed on pedestals they are your brothers and they are your brothers cultivated over many years mm -hmm. of integrity and integrity is not born overnight integrity is a life's work of checking yourself over and over and over again and this is what i'm talking about with you carving out the hollow bone is that you have walked a path of integrity long before warrior retreats even was birth which is why i believe that warrior retreats came retreats came through you and it's why i believe in so deeply believe in this retreat because it is laced with a win 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 across the board that is the vibrational contribution so if that is the container then anybody that's placed in the center of that container is going to the hum at the frequency of what happens behind the scenes. And what happens behind the scenes is that you see them as equals, you see them as brothers, and you honor them as if you would honor your closest family members and your, and your truest friends. And witnessing the way that the maestros would go and hug everyone and look into eye contact. I've never witnessed this in maestros or medicine carriers in the jungle there's been a disconnect. There's mm -hmm. been, it's like, oh, we're just like here to serve you and this is our job. However, what I felt different when I placed my foot on that land was family. Yeah. Yeah. And that is what I want to just acknowledge within Warrior Retreats is because the pulse of it is service. And I realized that all of my suffering, my personal suffering of what was happening ended when I was in service with, with my fellow warriors and you leading the way. <laughs> and I returned to myself in ways that was so much greater than what it was even before. And so I wanted to continue to reflect this to you and just to highlight your voice and warrior retreats because of the integrity in which you weave with. And it's such an important conversation right now because yes, the West needs to heal. It, it's, it's paramount. And how are we doing it? Are we continuing to perpetuate the win-lose situation? Mm -hmm. Are we continuing to perpetuate the consumerism? Are we continue to perpetuate the colonization of indigenous medicine? Or are we actually becoming part of the solution while recognizing the wound while still healing at the same time? Absolutely. Absolutely. Would you be open to sharing a little bit more about the service part of um, the warrior retreats outside of the jungle in the sense of the children? Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for that beautiful, beautiful reflection. And it is so important right now because everybody in their mama is working with plant medicine. <laughs> everybody in their mama, you know, is a shaman now. But what does it truly mean to be a healer? It doesn't mean a pedestal. It doesn't mean standing on the top of your ivory towers. It means your feet are on the ground. 
As Maya Angelou said, people are going to forget what you did. People are going to forget what you said. People are going to forget who you are, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And what's powerful about these maestros down in the jungles, you walk up to them, they're wearing like a dirty Homer Simpson Duff beer (laughs) t-shirt. You know what I mean? A lot of people use spirituality, use ayahuasca, use plant medicine as fashion accessories. Mm -hmm. And it's so much deeper than that. And what I learned going down there is remove the ego. There's a reason why there's no mirrors at the lodge. It's like remove the ego I long enough. That. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> yeah. I went into the bathroom and I was rooming with the women and I went into the bathroom. I was like, there's no mirrors. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, yeah, thanks for noticing. That was a conscious decision. I was yeah. like, it's so nice mm-hmm. to go beyond what it looks like from the outside in, yeah. but how it feels from the inside. Exactly. Out. Yeah. Exactly. And, and that's, The powerful thing about it is what I learned through my father is, one, in this egocentric Western mind, we think we are the center of the universe. And all one has to do is travel and they realize really quickly that 99% of the world doesn't know who you are. (laughs) And the universal connector to the world is love. And it's a smile and it's heartbeat. And so going down there through heartbeat and through love and through I see you truly it opens up all types of doors the service part became a big piece because my father began to take me into the hospitals and I started working with kids that were on their deathbed I've had many many children while I'm down there take their last breath in my presence and it brought me to my knees and it humbled me in the sense of me thinking that me growing up in the projects, me growing up on welfare, me growing up on Section 8, me growing up in the hood, all the stories I told myself of how hard I had it were actually nothing compared to these kids that were in the real ghettos of Peru and they had smiles on their face still. And so it taught me to be humble. It taught me to be grateful. And it taught me that everybody needs a little bit of reality check once or twice in their life. And there's nothing more gratifying for me to bring some bougie Westerners who have everything down to Peru to to really see how just blessed they are. And that's when I talk about the life of Waska. When you sit there and you see a group of girls who have just been sex trafficked and they're showing up with the biggest smiles in the world, or you see a kid who has cerebral palsy, who's going to be basically living in a cage at the Mother Teresa Hospital for the rest of his life, and they're smiling, or you're in the middle of the jungles and people just have a little bit of music and a snow cone and a dirty soccer ball, and they're smiling, it humbles people. Mm -hmm. It brings people back into the now. And through gratitude and through being grateful for what we have, it's a vibrational shift, and it changes how we show up in the world, and the ripple is palpable. and so. Because of my father bringing me into the reality of Peru, the reality of humanitarianism, a lot of people talk about, I want to be a humanitarian. It's easy to post, I want to be a humanitarian. But how many people actually can get down in the dirt with the people? And that's really what it's about. And so the service part of Peru is about getting people out of their egos long enough to get into their hearts. And this is why we sprinkle it throughout the entire retreat. Mm -hmm. We, for one, have committed to this family, this whole village in the jungles, to be their Western liaison and help them shine their light and share their gifts with the world. And in return, this is why when we go down there, it's like family, mm-hmm. like Nettie, the cook, you know, <laughs> or, or the mama seat thumbs and down there. They like the love is so real. And the village that we throw a Christmas party to and the school that we've empowered to have you know, the equipment for them to learn. And in return, they're like, now let us show you what we got. Yeah. Our songs, mm-hmm. our music, our healing, our medicine, our wisdom. The hugs. Their hugs. The, hugs the purest the, the hugs, the right? genuine hugs. Genuine they're hugs, like, oh, yeah. Western, here we go. Like, they're like, family. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so authentic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you go to Cusco and that's our second container and for those who haven't been on warrior warrior consists of four containers we start in the jungles then we go to cusco then we go to aguas caliente home of machu picchu and then we go to the sacred valley so it's a traveling retreat over the course of four days and what i come to learn is that it really travels up the chakras it starts in the ground it starts in the root muladhara 
And then we travel up to the sacral chakra and Manapura, that ego gets checked. Then we travel into the heart in Cusco. And this is where we spend an entire day in service, working in different hospitals and giving back to the people. And Blue was able to experience that this year where we started off at Mother Teresa Hospital. And then we went to two different orphanages this year. And it's one of those moments where time stops and you're in the moment in service and people oftentimes come out of that day saying it was the best day of their life. One of the most transformative days of their life, even more powerful than sometimes an ayahuasca ceremony. And I truly believe that when we are truly leading in our heart and living in our heart, again, life ayahuasca. Aha. Oh, wow. This is what it's about. Human to human. And I think it's so important because in this culture we live in, we become so disconnected. I was walking through the airport. There's no eye contact. Mm -hmm. There's no human to human connection. Mm -hmm. So to get back to people, to get back to connection, to get back to like, I see you, mm -hmm. that's the medicine we truly need. And I, I felt like more than most people that day, you just lit up. <laughs> and I just saw you in this like, as you were drawing on the kids and like showing love, like that's, that's the essence of warrior. That's the heartbeat of warrior. I took my tribal markers out there. It was like a body marker pen. And I was like, God, oh, I'm going to, how, how can I get the attention of the kids first? Like I'm thinking in my room, I'm like, I want to pray with all the kids. And I was like, all right, like Mary Poppins, just pack my bag with lots of things and tribal markers are always a go-to. All the kids love the tribal markers. And I remember this was a and there was one moment when I was sitting down and oh, the kids, like at, at the boys' orphanage, um, the, the, they would come and sit down and like one by one, they just wanted all of these different, oh, soccer ball, put a soccer ball, you know. <laughs> and then I said, you put Peru on my cheek. And, I remember that. Yeah. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a Spider-Man head and then he wanted Peru yeah, on his cheek. Yeah. And, I, and I drew Peru, but he move, moved on the U. So it looked like a V. And then... <laughs> John came over and was like, can't be writing perv on the kid's <laughs> cheeks. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh gosh, I've got to fix it, That's you know. Hilarious. It was like a funny moment of like reflecting back. However, you're right, there's a timelessness, there's a presence, and there's such a simplicity to just going and being present with those that are actually our teachers. Mm -hmm. It's some sort of distorted mentality to go in and be like, I'm going to teach them all the things. It's like, oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm here to be a student of all of you. And my gift is just my undivided attention. Mm -hmm. But let me learn the simplicity of your joy because we have so much. Right. And we're so unhappy. We're riddled with this low frequency anxiety that kind of just touches some of our things you know when we, we go about our day however being in the presence of these children no matter what their circumstances no matter what they have in fact it's very 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 little mm -hmm. there is such a joy and intoxication in their presence and that is the piece i believe is the is the fundamental reason why people walk away from these experiences going that was the best day of my life because we become reconnected with what it actually means to be alive. Right. I mean, right. that's the greatest gift we could ever receive is, wait, hold on. Wait, to be alive isn't to actually have more things yeah. and to have the fancy car and to have all of the material objects and to have all of the followers on Instagram. Wait, that's not the purpose. Right. Right. Wait, the purpose is actually recognizing that our success is based off of how much we laugh today. Mm. Our success is based off of how much we served today with all of the things that we have. And we actually chose to give back instead of continuing to consume and fill this empty hole that our ego just nom, 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 <laughs> wants more. It's like this little hungry ghost yeah. that lives inside all of us. Pac-Man. <laughs> exactly. It was a Pac-Man. Pac-Man that just never is full. <laughs> never <laughs> full. And I remember a feeling in the presence of these of these children that all of my worries all of my pain all of my heartbreak all of my uncertainties are minuscule mm -hmm. and simplicity is where happiness is found it's not found in more and i think that this is one of the big pieces in in the west is like the consumerism specifically in in america is like um Kind of reminds me of like a big hungry robot. It's like arm, 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 with a mask of Trump on it, the top of the robot. But it's like this is mask because it's yeah, actually yeah. really just 
governed by much bigger sources or uh, power. Um, and there is so much that we can learn from these indigenous ways, these, these um, indigenous people and how they choose to live their life. And instead of taking from them, it is about learning from them. Mm-hmm. And from that learning, recognizing that we get to serve as our reciprocity for what we've learned. And then that way we reconnect to our life force energy, our chi, our heart, and therefore our service to the whole. So warrior retreats also isn't just a retreat. It's not medicine. It's not even just service. It's an opportunity to remember why we're here Mm -hmm. and to reconnect to our why before we start running so that when we came back from the retreat, everything's different. Uh, the yeah. lens has been cleaned off. Yeah. And um, you said that Peru, you know, she has her own consciousness. Like that, the, the country of Peru has, there's like my will and then thy will. of yeah. the, Thy will yeah. of Peru. Yeah. And she had her own intentions where we were all like, okay, the end of our retreats, two weeks. P.S. Two weeks is a really long time for a retreat. Very like, long time. I think it's the only 14-day retreat there is. I've never seen a 14-day yeah. retreat. God bless the facilitators, you know. Shout out to Lou, Angela, Thor, Thor <laughs> Carlos, Cam, yeah, yeah. entire crew, Ozma. Magical yeah. beings that really, I mean, are going through their own warrior initiation. Just to, just to be able to hold the space for 14 days yeah. it's it's a big deal however Peru's decision was to keep us longer mm-hmm. do you want to share about why and how, what happened there yeah every year peru has a mind of her own and i've seen many people get kicked out of peru i feel like peru is like the grandma to like bali and costa rica she just has to me personally and some people may argue this but there's just a deeper a deeper archaic energy that flows through there. That's what I pick up on. Mm -hmm. And she always knows how to push me, my facilitators, and each one of our participants to the edge. Sometimes it comes into the form of Thor, my facilitator last year, breaking his arm Mm -hmm. on on the ATV because he was was so hyped. (laughs) Or... um, just different little nudges to really push us to that metaphorical edge of stretch where we have to really ground in our tools and wield them and see where we are. And so this year, the president of Peru, while we were there, two days after the ceremony, the retreat finished, was put in jail. And apparently he was one of the only presidents that ever rose up from the farmer class of people Mm. to the position of president a lot of people don't realize is that there's been revolutionary wars going on in peru since ancient times from the incas to the quechuas to the spaniard spanish colonizations you know i i love hip-hop and i have a hip-hop element of me and what i love one of the interesting facts about Tupac Shakur is that his name comes from Tupac Amaru, the revolutionary Quechua leader. Mm. And so when this president got put into jail, the farmers rose up. Millions of farmers rose up overnight. And therefore, the airports got shut down and warrior retreats went from a 14-day retreat (laughs) to a 21-day retreat, (laughs) which was exactly what we all needed. We needed a little bit more perspective. We needed to actually see what the people were fighting for. How many people go to these countries and actually see the people? Mm -hmm. Very seldomly do they do. This was an opportunity to really see the power of community, the power of cohesiveness, the power of what happens when a group of people really comes together and says no more. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they have nothing but they're rallying against a government to a point that they shut down Peru. What a testament to what we could accomplish with all of our resources. If we got out of our way, we got out of our perception of skin color and political orientation and religious choices, 
and we came together to stand for love, the Peruvians truly showed that they could do that. And it was a beautiful thing to see. And I think that for those of us that stayed, because most of the warriors left, seven more stayed after. For those that stayed, they got an opportunity to see something that you just don't get to see that often. Seven people, by the way. Yeah. Right on brand. Right, right, right on brand. <laughs> yeah, that was picked, hand picked. <laughs> and I feel like oftentimes we, uh, we like to, you know, we like to swipe past reality. We like to swipe past the truth. We like to remain in our t- metaphorical Truman shows. And <laughs> instead of seeing what really is there, mm-hmm. both dark and lighter teachers, mm-hmm. But if it's all light and it's all, if light is the only thing that we are standing in, we're missing out on all the gifts that come from the metaphorical caves. And so I feel that Peru showed off for us and she gave us a, an opportunity to go even deeper in our why, mm-hmm. deeper, in our, deeper in our truth and a deeper, take a deeper level of presence and pause for what is happening right now on earth. Mm-hmm. It's easy sometimes to remove ourselves, especially in our Western lives, to not really get involved. It's easy to just turn the other cheek. That's not mine. You know, I don't want to deal with that. I'm focused on something else. Or you got these people who are like in it for a minute and then it's on to the next. But the reality is, is humanity's asking us to wake up. Humanity is demanding that we stand for something. Humanity is asking us to start to walk in our truth and walk from heart. And that right there was a glimpse. And I'm so grateful that we got that opportunity. It truly was something that brought me to my knees. And I always say the higher you grow, the lower you must bow. There's an incredible story that I was told of when Jesus realized that he was God, that the first action he took was he started washing people's feet. It was a moment in time being there where it brought me to my knees and and reminded me that with great power comes great responsibility to be humble and to remember that we're standing for something so much bigger than we can imagine. Mm -hmm. That week at the end, I felt like was so necessary on many different levels. One being that there's one experience of having accommodation taken care of, beautiful accommodation and our food taken care of and going to the best restaurants in Peru and having moments of going down to the shops and experiencing all the different styles of alpaca you can wear <laughs> and um, being with the, the, the community and being in the, the community, I mean, the, the, um, the retreat itself and essentially, you know, being guided and chaperoned through this experience then I actually, you know, I was like, well, maybe I'll move to Peru. Like I spend a significant amount of time here. I'm so deeply in love with this place. And I had only got one side of the coin of what's really happening. And when we ended up being you know, asked, well, not asked, we had to stay longer. Um, we got to stay longer. I got to see actually the political side of things and a deeper understanding of what's really actually happening for everyday life for the Peruvians. And this constant ongoing uh, fight with the government and for the b- between the people and the, the well-being and, and what's best for the people and actually what the government control is. And that gave me like a deeply rooted taste of Peru and the full spectrum of all sides of the coin, mm-hmm. um, not just this, this, this tourist experience or... Um, a chaperone catered experience. Right. And for me also, this was the truest initiation of what warrior retreats is about because it's easy to be a quote unquote warrior when you are in five star accommodation, your laundry has been done <laughs> and you're eating delicious foods and you're, and you're being driven from A to B. However, a true warrior, I believe, is finding peace amidst the chaos. And There was a time where we ended up in an Airbnb. Well, before we even got to the Airbnb, we had to get from Sacred Valley to Cusco 
to get as close to the airport as possible, depending on when the airport opens, we're ready to go. We don't have to make that whole trip. Mm -hmm. However, what had happened is that all of the roads had been blocked with, I mean, an array of things, barbed wire fence, tires tires. that are on fire, (laughs) um, (laughs) big cement blocks. Like it was, it was very uh, challenging mm-hmm. and it was almost like there was a time window it was like the, the riots are, or not the riots but the protests are, are going to start again at this time so you have this much time to get from here to here in the middle of burning streets i mean like this is was straight out of a movie mm-hmm. and we're in the bus and i remember thinking now warrior retreats has really begun yep. and how everyone's going to show up in this experience are we going to lose our call we're we going to find our center uh, this is really, you know, what it it really means. And Reggie Riverbear would always say to me, it's all bullshit till it's tested in the fire. Truth. It really is. Truth. Like all the mantras and the yoga and the meditations yeah. and the mala beads and all of the things. Right. It's all bullshit <laughs> until you're actually put in a position where there's like life's at risk right. or there's, you know, um, we're in a group situation and we're in the middle of a revolution. Mm-hmm. Like this is really actually the training. Yep. And I remember sitting in the, in, in the back of the bus with Thor, John, and <laughs> we decided cause the energy was a little bit scattered. Um, there was different frequencies all happening at the same time. We were not playing as much of a symphony as we usually did. The symphony was a little off key. <laughs> um, and I heard to, to describe it. <laughs> and, um, so John and I just decided to sing Christmas songs. <laughs> that's, that's a good place to go. And we both just got on the same page. And I was like, ready? <laughs> and we're like harmonizing and singing. He's like, you know any other Christmas songs? <laughs> we just got on the same page. And then um, there was also this part of me that I was observing and watching. And you and Carlos were in the car in front. And the rest of us were in the, mm-hmm. were in the bus. And witnessing how the men showed up witnessing how you all led us to safe harbor um was um, i was like just, i'm just gonna keep it real super turn on <laughs> like i was like this is hot <laughs> i was like okay we're in the middle of a revolution i'm watching the men like really actually show up yeah. you know and like be the embodiment of what they've said Mm -hmm. that this whole retreat is about. And, you know, there would be moments we'd pull over to the side of the road and y'all would get out and stamp out a fire and move barbed wire fence and build a bridge for the, for the van Mm -hmm. to be able to get over this next part of this Mario Kart level that was like extreme. And and there's, you know, like in Mario Kart, they throw bananas. You got to swerve the rubble on the side of the road and get everybody there. Turtle shells flying out. It was, yeah, yeah. it was amazing um, and also intense and very real. Yeah. Um, and I really, that was when I really understood on a much deeper level of what it truly means to be a warrior. And you um, and a few other brothers like led us to safe harbor. And that day, that evening will be etched in my heart forever. Um, and an invitation for me to continue to walk in integrity, continue to train the mind to stay at peace amidst mm-hmm. the chaos because it's the true Jedi of the mind. Um, and then when we finally got to our Airbnb, we ended up at a place that um, had no heating, no Wi-Fi <laughs> and no hot water. Yeah. <laughs> and it was pretty shanky. Like it was like, you know, um, shabby and janky. I just yeah. put them together. Shanky. That's a new Shanky, word. That's a great um, <laughs> <laughs> and we got there and we all had dinner that night. We we picked up groceries. It was like an apocalyptic grocery yeah, run. Yeah. At the same time, I'm launching season three of the Day Job. In the back podcast. of the grocery store. In the, literally on an empty shelf that's where all of the food good. had been taken out. I'm sitting on an empty shelf while y'all are all going around the grocery store picking up groceries. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there with the awful Wi-Fi reception tr- trying to communicate with Rachel and we're like, oh, season three is <laughs> launching in three minutes. I'm in the middle of like an apocalypse lifted grocery run <laughs> and i was like this is devotion <laughs> and um we came out of the grocery store and we all had a moment where we huddled together and we were like yay deja blue yeah. podcast yeah. launch of it and it was like a celebration and what i noticed is that even though there was chaos going on and even though it was a very real serious situation also it wasn't serious like it was like we had found the pocket of play mm-hmm. 
in the lightheartedness amidst the chaos. And I think that that is actually the truest strength of one's character and mind is to bring the levity into a situation and keep the lightheartedness within the chaos. And that was the pocket that we had all cultivated together. Um, and then we took the food home that night and we made a dinner. In the and ambulance. Asma made bomb dinner, like <laughs> MVP. And, um, Shout out to Asma. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we, we sang music and we danced and we huddled together and we loved on each other and we ate delicious food mm -hmm. and realizing that actually joy is found in the simple moments. You don't need to even have heating or hot water. Um, but we have each other and we had each other's backs. And 100%. We cared for each other and we, we, we looked out for each other. And that just reminded me, since I've been home, take care of the people around you. Like, go double down on it. Love them hard. When something, there's a hiccup or when there's a moment of like, whoopsies, uh, whether it's with my team or mm -hmm. a production for the podcast, it's like, it's good. Mm -hmm. We're on the same team. Let's figure it out. It's not me versus you. It's us versus the problem. Absolutely. You know, the, the pr growing up in the projects, growing up in the streets, <laughs> that's what made me comfortable in the chaos. And mm -hmm. I, I love moments like that. <laughs> it's like my, my opportunity to be in my Jason Bourne, like <laughs> straight up, like <laughs> Matrix Neo meets Equalizer. Like, let's, let's go. <laughs> let's see what it's really about. And what was cool is the, the brothers who were down there, Carlos, John, like, they were, they were down too. I felt like we were the Avengers going up against our own saga and we were going to make it out. And so it was like a big life-size video game. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and sense. yeah, I'm just so grateful that Peru gave us that opportunity. And one thing that I want to share with you, my reflection to you is there's a lot of people that talk a big game, but when it comes to walking it, it's a different story. And you, Blue, you walk the walk. You hold so much potency, so much power, so much elegance, so much beauty, so much wisdom. But to have you come down to Peru was such a gift. And to have you go with us on that journey from truly the jungles all the way to the Amazon into a revolution and see you the whole entire time as you're processing and integrating all of 2022, holding your heart there, staying true to your devotion, and holding a container of love for each and every person that was in that, that space, it was, it was an honor to have you there. And I keep saying, I'm like, I can't believe we got blue to come to Warrior Retreats. <laughs> like, well, Warrior Retreat 7, it took seven years to like get Peru right for you to step in. And then Peru showed off for you. I mean, she showed off for me. I gave you a hug <laughs> at one point. You were like, you said something most likely... Um, are you not entertained yet? Yeah, that was the <laughs> praise. From Gladiator. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? And um, uh, when you said that, I, mean, I hugged you. And then right over your shoulder, this dolphin just jumps out of the water while we're in the Amazon. And I was like, what is happening? It's we like, set it up with the dolphins before. Yeah. <laughs> Stage right, cue dolphins. Now when she's hugging Brandon, go, go. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like wow, what yeah. a gift. Yeah. <laughs> um, it really was spectacular from start to finish. And it was so effortlessly easy for me to stay mm -hmm. in my heart because I was surrounded by heart-led individuals. Absolutely. Every single person at that retreat was meticulous in mm -hmm. their own medicine. Mm -hmm. And I also want to place emphasis on your filtering process. Yeah. I know that you and your team of Jedis, Andrea, Lou, um, I don't know, did Asma do the pre -calls? Asma did as well, Asma yeah. did the pre -calls. John, John yeah. did the pre -calls. Okay, so there was hours invested. Hundreds. Hundreds of hours invested in getting on the calls and really asking deep questions. Mm -hmm. And what I believe the intention for asking those deep questions was, I want to feel your heart. Yeah. I don't care what you're doing in the world. I don't care how many followers you got on Instagram. I don't really give a, a shit about your level of a success mm -hmm. in the world. What I want to hear in the frequency of your words is your heart. Mm -hmm. And that was what allowed, after hundreds of hours of a vetting process, to allow the meticulous nature of the individuals that showed up for that retreat. So it was a point where I, everywhere I looked, just saw beauty. 
yeah. and I love you and I yeah. love you. Usually I go into a retreat yeah. situation and there's like one person and I'm like, yeah, all right. <laughs> like no yeah. judgment, just like yeah. there's a dissonance. However, yeah. um, there was zero dissonance in the group. It's it very important. Delicious. And yeah, I, I realized after warrior retreats too, as it started to grow and it started to expand that when one does the work, they deserve to choose who comes into their frequency. Mm -hmm. And when you have a place like Peru that's opened her doors, it's very important that people come with the right intentions and the right alignment and the right integrity. And when you're in a sacred space like that and you're allowing all the walls to fall down and you're working with medicine in many forms, one person out of alignment can throw the whole entire thing off. Mm -hmm. A little legendary story, warrior retreats number three, one person came in correct. One person was removed during the retreat, full refund. I don't play that. When it comes to creating a container, I take the container very seriously. And the criteria is heartbeat. So as Warrior has grown to now over 150 applications coming through last year and only 12 spots, mm -hmm. it's really important that we choose the biggest hearts. Mm -hmm. and. Being in all these spaces I've been in for the last, you know, 20 years and working with so many high achievers and quote unquote influencers and quote unquote best in the game, I've come to really value that the most powerful thing somebody can show up with is heartbeat. And mm -hmm. so we meticulously interview for who has that heart. It's not about if you can pay for the retreat. It's about, are you coming with the most heart? Because inevitably that person is going to alchemize the rest of the experience. And this is why when you came down there, you felt held. Mm -hmm. It was like, I see you. And it was with honor and respect. And what's really cool is you get some people who have no Instagram followers. You get some people who are super influential in certain ways. But when the heartbeat is on the same resonance and the same coherence is there, everybody just becomes family. And so my team, our, our hardest part and our most mm -hmm. rewarding part is the screening process. Mm -hmm. And not only that, we gave out six scholarships this year, full ride scholarships to come down because Warrior is not about making money. Warrior is a tool to help humanity up level. And this is why I continue to do it. I learned a long time ago that if I can ask myself, how can I serve first, I will always be filled. Mm -hmm. Instead of asking, what can I get? What can I give? Mm -hmm. And that's really what Warrior is. And so this year, we just put up the wait list. We have 200 people already on the wait list. You know it's about to double after this podcast. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> bring yeah, yeah. It. <laughs> yeah, and, and, the, and the, the real intention is to bring the right heartbeat down to Warrior 8, which is coming up. This year, there's also my intention for a long time is to bring these indigenous teachings back to the communities that I come from mm -hmm. and bringing more BIPOC individuals mm -hmm. into these spaces. And this retreat was one of the first times we were able to really offset the balance and bring a really, really diverse group mm -hmm. down there, mm -hmm. which is so important because we all have our individual medicine. And then also as we're expanding our imprint down in the jungles, opening up more opportunities for people to do dietas. And a lot of people think that the diet is the four days before I work with the medicine, I cut out the spices, I cut out sex, I cut out sugar, and that's my diet. But a lot of people don't realize is that when you go to the jungles and you do a true diet, besides like working with ayahuasca, you will go to like a certain tree and you will ask that tree for permission and you will work with that one tree. You will drink that one tree for anywhere from three days to upwards of a month. Mm -hmm. And so it's these, uh, it's just these opportunities to go so much deeper. Mm -hmm. I have been in many ceremonies and I have never in my life been in such a high integrity, mutually beneficial, loving, deep and clean container than I right. have in warrior retreats. I... I mean, you refer to the, the four shamans. We were blessed to have four shamans. <laughs> four master shamans. Four master shamans. That's unheard of. Um, well, now it's not. 
And I love how you call them the Backstreet Boys of the Jungle. The Backstreet Boys <laughs> And of the they jungle. walk in and they sit on their like lazy boy recliners yeah. and they like got, you know, that that the, they have their tools and they're ready to go. Mm. And there's like that there's like a joy and an excitement that like, that they're they're ready to play, you know, and, and co create. And um what I experienced in this space was the cleanest, most held, deep, wide, and loving space that I've really been in ever. And I have so much reverence and respect. And I am learning every single day of how I can honor the truth of my healing path and speak completely transparently of what I have experienced while also recognizing that I also have a responsibility to highlight the voice of the indigenous um, and to um, continue to support with everything that I share those that have allowed this to or have stepped into this as their lifeblood. And so I'm learning every single day and I learn exponentially from the way that you choose to show up in the world and how you have a loud warrior to be birthed through you that is now impacting so many people's lives that have gone back out into the world. And not only after Warrior Retreats has closed and we go home, we have our WhatsApp group and it is alive and popping and we are supporting each other and we bring into the chat something that's present or something that we're struggling with and we all go full force in because this isn't a life's work. This is, Sorry, this isn't a season. This is a life's work. Mm -hmm. This is a life's work to when we go through the Warrior Retreat you are now initiated mm -hmm. for the rest of your life to walk in integrity, transparency, authenticity, service, and love. Mm. And so I just want to say thank you for being the embodiment of that so that we get to remember who we are in your presence and through everything that you create. It's an honor. <sighs> thank you for saying yes. And thank you for, yeah, thank you for coming down. And thank you for being part of my zany little experiment <laughs> down in Peru. And I'm super excited to open up the doors once again this year for more people to experience what Warrior is. And I trust every year that Warrior chooses who she wants to come. Mm -hmm. And so a few months, we're going to be gearing up again to get Warrior 8's tribe locked in. And I'm so excited to meet the individuals that feel the call and are ready to go on this journey from the Amazon to the Andes, but more importantly, as Andrew Bennett would say, the journey from the head to the heart. You're such a gift. This is amazing. <laughs> Banner, for all of those that are tuning in, um, where can they find you? I know that you've also just dropped a TEDx talk. Epic, by the way. Definitely check it out. Rach, put it in the show notes. <laughs> oh great um where can people find you if they want to continue following the journey all right so instagram is my living journal <laughs> a lot of people think i'm posting for like everybody else mostly is my stuff i'm yeah. working through <laughs> so instagram is where i post most of my movement and my energy my yoga classes just started to stream on netflix no big deal. Via Nike. So Thank shout out she. to the swoosh. And I also host bi-weekly lectures on the Mind app. You can find that on Instagram at Do You Mind. And then Warrior Retreats. Instagram is where we upload and share all the information there. I have never been a tech dude. So if you go to Warrior Retreats website, it's probably a little bit outdated. But that's, <laughs> that's because like we just, we, tr we, we operate from a vibration of love we just are in that space but um warrior retreats is always moving and always energizing and this year there's going to be a lot of momentum there's gonna be opportunities to do more dietas we're talking about doing a warrior women where we bring women together down there to do a dieta with just women we're talking about doing warrior black where i'm bringing my brothers the ones that look like me on a curated rite of passage through egypt and we are doing Warrior Retreats 8, and all of it is going down, tried, true, and seasoned, and I'm so excited to share it with the world. So stay in touch and just remember, the world is a better place just because you exist. Let's continue to be the change. Let's continue to shine our light. Let's continue to stand for truth, and let's continue to fight the good fight and truly embody both the, the heart and the fist, the yin and the yang, 
Because that's truly what it's about to be a warrior. Thank you, Brandon, for being here. The greatest gift you could ever offer is your time and your presence. So, so grateful to receive your medicine and your magic. It's an honor to, <laughs> to step into the spaceship <laughs> with Rachel and Matrix. Hey. <laughs> to all you beautiful bluebirds, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Deja Vu podcast. If you resonated with today's episode, then please go ahead and share it on your Instagram stories. Tag myself, tag the Deja Vu podcast, tag Brandon Collinsworth. Um, and so that we can reach many, many, many more people than we can usually reach with our own platforms. Um, and I, uh, my prayer is that you receive this, whether you experience warrior retreats or not, and recognizing that you have an invitation to be a warrior of your everyday life and find the magic in the mundane and find the peace in your mind of how you respond to it, because ultimately we can't uh, preempt what's going to be shown to us, what cards we're going to be dealt, but how we respond to it is the power that we hold within our hearts. And so we are birthing more heart-led leaders in the world because we need you to step in, share your voice from a place of compassion and a deep understanding of self-worth and from that place we will transform this planet so we have a sacred responsibility and we can only do it together so until next week thank you for tuning into the day job podcast and we love you so much <laughs>